Hello and welcome back to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle podcast. My name is Hayden and today I am joined with the one and only Teddy. And today we will be going over our top 10 favourite episodes of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TV series from 2003 Uh, Nickelodeon. uh, It was actually the 2012 version, but either way, let's let's keep going. Um, so yeah, uh, who wants to start uh, this week's one-off? Because we haven't really thought this far ahead, have we? <laughs> uh, do you want to go? Uh, uh, do you want to start uh, your top ten off? Yeah, all right. Well, I was thinking we could do like I say an episode, you say an episode. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Say, see how that goes. But yeah, I'm gonna start off strong with episode one, the introduction to this whole series and this whole story of how this podcast came to be okay that's a really interesting one i i i i must admit i did have the episode the episode would have been on my list it was it was like an honorable mention like uh, like 12th or 11th place so it's a really good episode um but um yeah um why do you have it so high on your list well this episode was the first episode that I ever did with you, Teddy, and this whole podcast. And it was just a really nice episode to get into. And of course, this is my first introduction to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe and exploring the episodes and just depicting it piece by piece, learning about the turtles, learning about the universe itself. And it was just a really memorable episode because it's where everything started and began. Like, a couple of months ago, I would have not known about the Ninja Turtles. And then, of course, present day me, I know... Sure, I don't know everything. I don't know everything about the Turtles, but I know a lot more than I did. So this episode one was just a really important episode for me understanding the story and of course just starting this whole journey off together along this podcast which is just awesome to me I sort of feel bad now because I've done that episode on my list now <laughs> um, but yeah uh, for my number 10 I had that episode which I can't say the name of Parasitica that one <laughs> Parasitica? Yes I, yes I know you keep saying it but I can't I can't say it um, no, but yeah. I was just really shocked that that was your uh, in your top 10 Oh yeah, uh, the, the episodes which you'll find well on my list are very story focused, and this one wasn't really overly story focused in terms of the Krang or the Foot Clan or, or anything like that. But I must admit, I do like how this episode, while a very small cast, it had the tension that was building up throughout the episode, the Mikey scene where he where he pretends to be evil. There's like a lot of, I'd say the episode has had a lot of really good moments within the episode, and while not anything not too important for the series overall. It just had a different kind of feel compared to the other episodes where it felt like it was a really important, darker, more serious episode while still not really being very important and could be one that you could skip. And yeah, I must admit, I do like that. And I feel like, and I'm, and uh, yeah, I must admit, like, even like, even you, like, when I was uh, editing the thing, I was listening back to you saying it. And I feel like, because uh, I don't know if you got this episode on the list, but, uh, but I think you did sort of enjoy the episode because it reminded you of like The Walking Dead and stuff. And uh, while I've never seen The Walking Dead, it just gave me like, a lot of horror vibes which you don't normally see. And there's like, so many good things about the episode which I did really enjoy about it. Um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, I feel like I should have had that down on my list, but I it completely crossed my mind. I was thinking of all the others that I could do, but yeah, like you saying about The Walking Dead is... It does give some horror vibes, which I do like about the episode. What's your number nine? Oh, my number nine um, has got to be. Sorry, where's my notes? Uh, has got to be um, episode fifteen um, with the Worldwide Genome Project. Okay. Um, the reason why for this was the. Um, the uh, fighting scenes in the um, April school with the modified um, Krang droid that was fighting April and the turtles for some odd reason that just stuck out for me because of the cool fighting scenes just seeing the different Krang droid the like the different well it's not mutated I would say an upgrade to the Krang droid and how they're developing their technology on earth 
and of course Shaw. It's not really a major focus point in the episode, but I just enjoyed how the, the Krang bot was fighting the turtles and the different fight moves that you tr traditionally don't see in a normal Krang. So it was really, really nice to see um, a difference in the Krang and how they're evolving and uh, developing in the human world, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, I must admit, I do really enjoy the episode, and the episode is on my list, so I'll have to talk about that one when I do actually get to the episode, uh, because I do because I do really enjoy that one. Um, okay, so for my number nine, I had episode fourteen, which was the new girl in town, which is the one where I got to see Karai, and I just I, I wouldn't say I, I don't know if it was better than episode twenty three. I thought like maybe I may have put them uh, in the wrong order, but well, I still really do enjoy this episode, and I think the main reason why is just Karai. Karai just steals the episode. Just an amazing character, has a really good introduction, and really sets up her presence throughout the the series. And there are some other good elements throughout this episode, uh, such as Raphael finally learning the responsibilities and how hard it is for Leo to be the leader. There were like, some other really good, cool moments, but I do think the standout bit from the episode was just Karai and just her. <laughs> I mean, just like her whole amazing character arc uh, throughout. This, well, no, I wouldn't say character arc, but like, her whole character throughout the episode was just amazing. Definitely, I have got to agree with you on that one. Uh, so yeah, um, what's your number eight? My number eight, let's see, um... Da -da 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 -da. Number eight was probably the introduction to, um... Oh, which one was it? Baxter Stockman, episode five. Okay. The, uh, introduction to, um, the new characters, like... In this episode, well, this podcast, you are going to hear me refer back to all the new characters quite a lot. Just the introduction to them, because those characters have just made the series, like, to what it is, which is just awesome. So, yeah, it's got to be back to Stockman. I was going to say the um, the Rat King, but mm -hmm. I think Baxter Stockman takes this one, because Baxter Stockman, he's... I like him. He's a nerd. He's geeky. Sure, he has his moments, but he's just a really cool character because he's different from most, and he uses his brain and intellect instead of his brawn, which I just really like to see in characters who see themselves as superior to others, but are, fa are quite factually not. So it was just funny to see Stockman and his character play out in the universe, and it was just a really cool thing to see. I'd like to say the episode was quite enjoyable. I don't think that uh, made it my top. You know, it wasn't in like an honorable mention, but I was quite surprised uh, when I was on, on online to get people's comments in for this uh, week's podcast. Like, surprisingly, the episode came out quite a lot, and I was quite surprised at that. Um, I mean, I've always found like the joke of. Uh, Saying Baxter's name wrong was is a bit childish for me, but I feel like that may be because I'm not of the right age for that type of joke. But I was quite surprised with how many people actually do enjoy the episode quite a lot. And like, if you if you do enjoy it, then good for you. I I didn't think that was a, uh, as strong as episode as like other ones on our list. Um. Okay. So for my number eight, uh, which was the alien gender as well. Um, and yeah, I must admit, they had some really fun fights uh, throughout this episode, such as the one in school. But I do think, again, the, the standout thing from this episode was just cry throughout this episode. I like her attitude towards the turtles, and her more jokey side of her character, a bit more cookie and all that. I'm really disappointed that like this show got rid of that aspect of her character, as it made it definitely made the scenes like, stand out much more. Her character is much, much better. Shayna got rid of that, but I mean, at least we got it for this episode, and yeah, Justin was a little bit of a disappointment. But other than that, it was just Karai that stole this episode. Ah, oh, definitely. Karai, I can see a pattern uh, evolving here, Teddy. Like, is Karai yeah. your like, go to at this, at this time? More or less. <laughs> More or less. Nice. Um... Okay, so moving on to number seven. Uh, what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven has got to be the introduction, uh, episode thirteen, I Monster, and the introduction to the Rat King himself. Ooh, okay. 
Um, I Monster episode 13. I don't know how and why, but it just really stood out to me. Like the introduction to a new character who was mutated not by Krang mutagen, but his own stupidity and ignorance to his own experiments. And he created himself telepathic abilities, which it's just really weird to see because usually you see all the Krang and the mutagen mutating um, people and animals alike. But he was the one who's smart enough and also ignorant enough. Ignorant yeah, we know enough, <laughs> ignorant enough to give himself telepathic abilities, which I just found really cool. And of course, his entire design, his costume, his overall character and graphics to this the this episode was just awesome. Seeing his distorted and burnt face was it was quite a drastic change and quite a drastic and dark character whose presence is just felt throughout the entire episode as this lurking, ever-growing presence who can be lurking around any corner, has eyes everywhere, and you can't breathe without thinking, is he going to pop up behind me? And it was just a really cool character to see and how he and how he just developed the story. And I really, really, I'm going to say this now, I would really like to see him in more episodes because I really wish that in the season one he would be more developed such as like other characters like Baxter Stockman uh Dog Pound and all of the rest because he was a really good character to see and we only saw him for like a couple of episodes which was a shame but overall the Rat King just takes my uh, spot for that one okay yeah I'm, I'm, okay okay yeah so I must admit your description about the episode just makes it sound a lot better I remember this was being the um <clears throat> Like the first episode that we had different opinions on, and I must admit, I do. Re- I I think Rat King is one of the best Tovans ever, and he's not used properly whatsoever. And I must admit, I, d- I must admit, I do like this aspect of the character of being like more. I know super powered, with telepathic, and all that. I feel like that's a really interesting aspect of the character. However, I feel like with Rat King, he's like the type of character that you need to go more monster or more human and I think that because they try to do both it sort of didn't really work too well for me but I must make your description for the episode made it sound a lot better than what it, than what it actually was for me um so for my number seven I had episode 19 uh back to scan bit and I just liked um the whole aspect of the maze and the uh, like villains and the turtles working together throughout the maze there's a really interesting uh I would say like a lot of interesting team up moments. Go see Ziva's backstory, uh, April and Spinter bonding and moving their f- uh, relationship forward. And I feel like this was the episode that definitely changed the whole show and made it go in more this type of episode type of direction. Where it was able to balance out the comedy, the uh, story, the characters, and made it feel really perfect and all that. And I, I must admit, I do see a lot more like this type of writing and storytelling in future episodes. So I do really enjoy that part of that uh, episode. But yeah, there was like some really good um, scenes throughout this one, such as like April learning the um, weapons and then the uh, like the. T- the fan weapon thing, emotional thing. There's so many good uh, parts about this episode. Hmm. A hundred percent, definitely. Like you've you've said it. Like the amount of information that is in that episode, you've condensed it down very well, I believe. And <laughs> sure, if I was to say that, I will probably go on and on and on. But it's a good description. Oh, thank you. Um. Okay. So, uh, what's your number six? Oh, number six. Um, has got to be episode 18 with Cockroach Terminator. Ooh, okay. What's the that? Reason, the reason why is because... Um, one, I was going to have another character take that um, role, but I'm going to save him for later. But Cockroach Terminator is in my top... In, in number six is because... It's probably because of the copycatting from Terminator, but I don't want to give this episode a bad rep because it is such a good episode and it's such a good contrast of how different franchises can utilize other franchises which are 
worldwide and popular. Um, the real scenes for me was the Cockroach Terminator itself and the Neutralizer. And the one scene in particular was when the Neutralizer uh, walked out of the fire unharmed and uninjured. He just walks out the fire as if he was the actual Terminator himself, which is just really cool to see and how the referencing compared the images. Like if you had the neutralizer and that scene and that screenshot, and of course you had the screenshot of from the original <laughs> Terminator movie, you would see the differences and the similarities, which I just absolutely love because I'm a, if you couldn't tell, I'm a Terminator fan as well, diehard Terminator fan. And just seeing that episode was just a really cool thing. Just the references of the Terminator, which is really, really awesome to see. And that's what I love about this episode. And that's why it takes my position as number six in this list. Okay, so like with this episode, I must admit, yeah, I did really enjoy this one. But I feel like the reason why I don't have it on my top ten and might be uh, the reason why you have it on your one is because you actually know Terminator. Whereas I've only seen the second one and thought it was okay. I, I'm really for the franchise. So I've got a feeling that if I was to watch more of the movies and actually fall in love with it then I would have a then this episode would be much higher on the list um sadly it's not but um but yeah, yeah at least you at least you have to find something throughout this episode mm. um okay so for my number six I had enemy of my enemy and for the most part I feel like this episode was pretty okay and just um I don't know there's like a lot of stuff that was just happening because it had to happen such as the Tolls find about the new alien ship and then Karai wants to work with the Turtles. There's just a lot of that just because it had to happen and um, I don't know, for me it didn't really feel very natural. But I do think that the thing that definitely um, like bumped this episode up so much higher was the fact that we got the amazing Doc fight scene with the Shredder vs Turtles, La uh, no, <laughs> oh god, uh, Leo vs Karai, and then Karai within um, that, oh, um, that she's Shredder's daughter. So many good things within that, I think it's like five minutes. All that jammed into one episode. And if it wasn't for that one scene, then this episode would just be okay. Also, I must admit, the another reason why this episode's um, quite a bit high up on my list is because of the ice cream light. Oh, the ice cream light. Oh my gosh, that was... Yeah, the ice cream light was a uh, highlight of that episode, was it not? <laughs> yeah, I, I still want one. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, what's your number five? Oh, my number five. My number five has um, has got to be. I think you've already stated this, but episode fourteen, uh, uh, the Karai's introduction to huh? the series. Okay. And just. This episode takes my my number five is because it's Karai. Like, come on, you can't get you can't go wrong with Karai. Karai is just that overall character. She's female, the female dominance and the pride and the cockiness, like you said before, going up to her father saying, "Look, this is how I'm gonna run, and if you try and stop me, you're gonna fail." And just her presence in the series, and of course. Just her interactions with the turtles, especially with Leo. Like, there is there is something going on there, but that's for another time. But seeing her interact with April and the bitter rivalry between the two was just really awesome to see. And having Karai, and of course now that we know, and probably everyone knew this, that Karai was related to Splinter and the whole thing coming open... It's it's a really cool character to develop and see, and her whole story arc is just a dynamic mess of chaos, and it's just an incredible character to explore and see, and that's why that episode 14 and Karai's introduction takes my uh, spot as number 5 on this list. Okay, well, yeah, I would give my opinions on it, but I'd uh, save my one. Uh, so for my number five, I'd episode twenty-one, Karai's Vendetta. I mean, oh God, where do I begin with this episode to just say how awesome it is? Because I'm, because I'm pretty sure you're like thinking about like, how, like what, how to describe it. I mean, the whole underwater base thing, that was like pretty fun, and okay. 
uh, some really interesting good uh, scenes throughout the one, such as Mikey riding, uh, riding the worm uh, like a bull, uh, amazing thing, but I feel like you're going to agree with me on this, the April versus Karai fight scene, it, it, you can't put into words of how good it is. Am I, am I right about saying that? Oh, definitely. I'm surprised. Oh my... That's another one I didn't mad. What? You, oh, wait, he's not on your list. I could... Oh. That was a terrible mistake. But I'm glad you brought it up. Because I... How could I not put that down on the list? My oh my gosh. Like one of the episodes from the, from like the show and stuff like that. I know where he rides around on the giant like prehistoric creature and of course it's in a different environment yeah I mean the whole cry versus April fight I mean we just can't put into words of how good it is I can't I'm believe like, I did not put it down I'm very disappointed in you Hayden I, I, I thought I thought we were having a really I thought spiritual I ha- debate I, about I, this just... but no oh, no it looks like that I'm going is... to be getting a new host for, uh, for the podcast then <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh well, okay then, disappoint me with your number four. Oh, my number four has got to be the introduction to uh, Leatherhead. Ooh. Okay, the I had that one quite high up. Or yeah. higher up. Yeah, I'm interested in here with, uh, um, why you have it here. Um, well, as number four on my list, Leatherhead, like I said, I'm going to refer to a lot of the new characters in this episode because it's... I just love how different they are. Of course, you've got the normal turtles, and then of course, you've got the characters that make up the turtles universe and the whole environments and life around it. And Leatherhead takes the books in this one because Leatherhead was a originally a little baby crocodile, got mutated, and the whole thing about his anger, about his presence, his overall perspective about the Krang and of course who doesn't love a guy that hates the Krang come on that's <laughs> that's 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 a thing come on but yeah yep. Leatherhead is just one of those unique characters that you don't see very often and that are portrayed so well such as his voice his character his story arc as well it's just a unique character it's it's like Karai it's a complex and misguided character that can be used in any situation and of course he's an ally as well and he's just a really cool guy in general this this sure he's a crocodile with anger issues but who's to say Raph isn't a guy with anger issues you know yeah but, yeah that's why he takes number four on my list okay so like with that episode I will talk about a bit more uh, when I do get to that on my list uh, okay, so for my number four, I'd episode eight, Never Say Xever, uh, which was the first introduction of Xever. And this is, uh, I feel like the, the thing that makes up this episode uh, that makes it so good for me is the action scenes. And while this one definitely, I feel as though there are other episodes that are definitely should be higher, there was just something about uh, this, fight, uh, this episode with the fight scenes from the warehouse to the one on the rooftop. Those are like two really good stand up uh, like fight scenes, which I'm gonna be like, yeah, I can just sit back and relax and enjoy. The animation was quite good. Um, it, I, I must admit, I do feel as though I probably should have put Cry's Vendetta a bit higher than this one, but at the same time, th- these two episodes, like, I'll say, these two episodes are, I'll say, compete with uh, the Cry vs. April fight and Cry's Vendetta. And I must admit, I do really enjoy it. The, yeah, I, I, I thought I'm not going to say much more than that, I'm just going to keep repeating myself. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so for your number three, uh, what's your number three episode? Um, my number three episode was probably the season finale. And of course, it's kind of a two, it's a joint episode between 25 and 26. Um, it's because um, I would say... It would be my first, I mean, my top one, but I'm saving one for later. And the 25 and 26 episode finale just took it for me because it was it was the end of an, it was at the end of the journey. It was the end of the world for the turtles, but of course, 
as per usual they come in and save the day and just seeing a new character as well like um krang prime seeing the new environment seeing the new possibilities of where the series can go and overall just seeing the whole turtle universe develop and how it can go on further and with different characters and different enemies to combat overall this episode is very broad in in what i can say because there is so much to decrypt and digest with this episode like there is so much going on and of course it's spanned over two episodes there is a lot to remember <laughs> but overall i must say the episode is a good um how can I say this? Um, a drop-off point to in which the Turtle series can develop further with new threats to face and seeing the universe expand over time, which that's why it's my top three. Okay, yeah. So like with that one, that one is also I do have a bit higher up, so I'll probably expand that. Uh, I'll give my thoughts on that one when I do get to it. Uh, for my number three, which is episode twelve, which was the first appearance of Leatherhead, and I just like how they tell the story of Leatherhead. And making like a very emotional character uh in uh the other uh, which next series we're gonna go on to which also has a head they do a really compelling story for him as well but for his first introduction episode to just go straight into a banger where oh yeah he's abandoned he he's been taught you um i feel like it shouldn't be on uh, on a kids show and also uh i've ex- expressed my uh, opinion on my key saying that I don't feel that like this is the best version of Mikey, and they use uh, these like made him have a little false humor. But I feel also with this episode, they finally gave him a really good uh, story to tell, and was able to show that he is like a really good character. He's able to uh, like he's able to show the differences of him compared to his brothers, where he's able to see like an actual person instead of a monster of leatherhead. And there's so many uh, like, really good things, and I feel also like that episode. Surprisingly, no one's really analysed the episode properly, and I thought that's well, one of the episodes that you could just go into it, analyse each deed or scene, and be like, oh my god, yeah, that's uh, that scene has changed the whole episode, and it's taken on a whole new meaning for me. It's, I would say it's a really powerful episode, um, and yeah. Um, okay, so what's your number two? Uh, my number two... Um... Ah, that's why. You know when I said I didn't have the episode down? It's because I thought I had 10 episodes already because I included 25 and 26. Oh, uh, it was one. As one by mistake. Uh, So that's where we we got mucked up there. So, but as my episode two was probably got to be the... Where is it? Um, probably the the. Uh... Oh my gosh, I forgot the episode's name. We've talked about it. Um, I believe it was the underwater one, with oh. the. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh god! Oh um! Oh, um, Cries Vendetta. There we go. I'm not gonna lie; these episode names are very misleading. <laughs> <laughs> well, this went to get um to next show. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but yeah, um, um, but yeah. Karai's Vendetta was a really interesting one for me, and that's why it's got to be my episode two. It's because um, of its new... Um, just including Karai, like we've said it before, Karai and April's fight was just awesome. And I really did enjoy Donnie's new invention, the, um, the, the turtle sub, which was in the shape of a turtle. <laughs> and... And the the one scene in which the uh, the turtle sub is being attacked by the prehistoric beast, and of course the savagery on Leo's attempt to break up the um, romantic connection, let's say, between the prehistoric beast and the sea turtle. Uh, I mean the sea. Um, t- oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> turtle submarine. Sorry. Um, his savagery in that scene just alone. He just out of nowhere pulls down 
uh, lever and of course step charges appear out the back of the sea turtle and just blow up the prehistoric beast, the poor thing. And just breaks his heart. But just um, as well as Korai and April's fight, that's just a major thing in this in that episode which I do enjoy. And that's that's why it's gonna be my second position in this list, so yeah. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, so with that episode, I must admit, I, I do feel as though I'm pretty sure I put that episode high just because of how good it was. Um, so for my number two, I had episode nine, A Gauntlet, and for the most part, the first half of the episode where I was breaking in to get Kirby out, I felt as though that was a bit pointless just because they don't actually get Kirby out, but when you get into the second half, where it's also fighting the crane with the arrows, amazing uh, little scene, uh, and then you get details versus Chris Bradford and Zeva, another amazing scene, and then you get the Shredder versus Tails fight for the first time. And I, oh god, I, there's so many really good uh, moments throughout these episodes. Uh, I'm, I really do love the uh, Tails versus Krang with the arrows. It's so different and unique because Tails don't really fight with the bow and arrows. So it seemed like this with how they choreographed or like, visualised it, it was very different and really unique and to the point where I actually want to see if those actually fight with bow and arrows a lot more. Uh, Chris Bradford and um, is everyone, this burst my face, it was just so energetic and really like two school characters going against and amazing. And then he just, oh god, the Shredder vs. Uh, Toes fight scene. Uh, I love how dark it is and then when they go into the more comic book uh, aspect of it, or like visually, again, that, I mean, oh, as a comic book fan, it, it pleased me so much. Uh, um, but yeah, okay, so okay, so now for number one, I want to uh, guess uh, where number one is. I want to say it could be episode four, uh, first appearance of Chris Bradford. Oh my gosh! How the hell do you know that? <laughs> wait, is, wait, is it actually? Yeah, episode four, the introduction to Chris Bradford. Oh my! Um... How in? How in? Green, I just how <laughs> how did you know? Have you got like have is there a microphone in here? Hold on a sec, I'm looking for this microphone. Oh my god! I, I mean, I mean, I knew that you loved Chris Bradford, but I didn't, I didn't realize you loved him that much. Oh my god! How the hell did you know that? I am, I'm actually genuinely scared for my life now. Where is the microphone? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. But um, yeah, do you want to reveal why? Um. Well, you probably already know why. It's Is it's it Chris, Chris Bradford. Bradford. It's yep. yeah, it's it's Chris Bradford. It's because his introduction was just really cool to see his character, his his motives, his ideology to Splinter, and of course, who can forget? It's played by the same guy as Mr. Krabs. The voice actor that does Chris Bradford also does the voice for Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob SquarePants. And that is also uh, another driving factor for why this is my first, um, my number one on this tier list. It's because it was just a unique character. He's got a unique voice. Sure, he doesn't sound like Mr. Krabs, but if you compared SpongeBob to the Chris Bradford scenes you see the similarities you see it you can hear it and even now I can hear the voices in <laughs> the voices right now in my head just the differences and the similarities are just clear as day but yeah it's the episode entirely was just the introduction to Chris Bradford and his character who sadly I wish there was more time as a human being instead of the dog pound mutagen version although I do love them both equally and they are good characters I just prefer Chris Bradford's human form instead of dog pound but yeah that's that's why it's got to be my number one on this tier list I am honestly quite surprised that episode that the episode is your number one I mean I must admit I know why because it's Chris Bradford and all at the same time it I mean, for me, uh, there are like, so many good things about this episode. I mean, the lighting in the sewers, that was an amazing thing. The fighting for this episode was quite good as well. But I didn't realise you, you liked it that much. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I um I to be honest, the fighting scenes as well. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love them. The fighting scenes with the lighting, the sewer fights, the just the this the integral parts that have just made the episode to what it is. But yeah, Chris Bradford just takes it by storm for me. I I know it's a bit silly. I know it's a bit weird, but Chris it's Bradford is just. just it's my list. Yeah, yes, thank you, Teddy. Thank you. If anyone's got a problem with my list, deal with it. <laughs> uh, well, okay, so for my number one, uh, I feel like it may be a bit obvious, uh, is the season finale. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoy how they raise the stakes uh, from just, like, little crank fights in a warehouse or foot uh, fights on the rooftop to all of a sudden the end of the world. And the two standout scenes for me from this episode was one, the toes in the... Um, uh, like, Leo sacrificed himself, go, jump in, slice into the crane, and then jump out the window. A, a really cool and amazing shot. And it's just... R- rap man... Uh, no, uh, like, no, uh, no. R- rap mode Splinter. Uh, and the whole fight with Splinter and Shredder and Rua Cry. That scene alone, I'd say, it honestly does uh, make it like one of those episodes where, like, I know it jaw dropping into your mouth every time you see it. Um, and definitely, he like has a competition for like being one of the best episodes from the show, one of the best episodes from the whole franchise. It is just a really good episode. Uh, however, um, there is, uh, I must admit, with this uh, season finale, I do wish there was a bit more. I know that like, there was a build up with the Krang. The alien invasion. I just don't think it was really that prominent uh, for the big alien invasion. It is for me. The show so it just came out of nowhere, and this was the like everything just happened in this episode. So I would have preferred if there was a little bit more. But the stuff with Splinter and Shredder and Karai. Um, again, it's sort of like with Christ and Desert. How do you put that into words of how good it is? Uh, oh, yeah, I am. Um, I, I it. To be honest, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, you're like, yeah because I, I, I'm with you on this one. Because I had so much to say, and I, I, we can only do it in such a small amount of time, I had yeah. to really think and condense down my top 10 episodes for this list. That's why I have I feel like I've missed some. But of course, you've, um, you've also said as well, Teddy, that you've also said the episodes that I couldn't get down and we've mm. been managed to able to talk to them about it, which was, which is really good because yeah, some of them, I don't know, like some of them like Karai's Vendetta. I can't believe I got that, didn't get that one down and the rest of them in general. So we've kind of had the same principles and the same ideas and our tier lists are similar, but I'm glad that we got to manage to do episodes that we didn't get down on our list too. Yeah, um, yeah. I must admit, I was quite, I was quite surprised with, like your list because how like different and unique it was. Uh, like some episodes, uh, I was quite surprised like like where you placed them and like some episodes which you did put on the list, but I didn't put mine. And like, I mean, like you have your reasons and must admit, like hearing them, I really understandable. Like the Quarter Terminator one, I can understand why you like that because. You loved uh, Terminator, and I was quite like I must admit, every time we talk about the Armonster episode, I'm always like really fascinated because that was an episode which we had different opinions on, and it's also one of those ones which uh, I'll I mean I I won't probably change my opinion, but like like every time I hear your one, it's also like oh yeah I didn't see it that way, but you still haven't changed my opinion. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you don't want to hear the people's uh, top ten or? Episodes. Oh, the, yeah, definitely. Let's hear them. Okay, so I put it out on Reddit, and one person uh, didn't understand the uh, didn't understand the assignment, and they was talking about the 2003 show, and they was talked about an episode from season one called The King, and then they went on to talk about a Christmas episode. I don't think they understood the assignment. <laughs> yeah, but good points for trying though. Yeah, I mean, I tried. Um, yeah, they okay, tried. so okay, so some of these I'm going to. Uh, there's one person who who said the episode name and went into the description why. I'm probably not going to read the description why because um, I mean we'll be here all day. Okay, so uh, not dead Hanzo. Uh, they put my uh, my subjective opinion. Uh, for number ten, they have episode one and two. 
for number 9 that episode 13, episode 8 was 14, uh, number 7 was uh, Baxter's Gambit, number 17 was the TCR Boat. Oh yeah, that was the episode that we didn't have on the list. I was quite surprised no one had that one on the list. Um, yeah. oh, oh, oh my god, another one! Episode 24, Neutralizer. No one had that one on the list. Um, number 4 was episode 20, um, Enemy on my Enemy. Number 3, uh, episode 21, Karate and Detta. Number, uh, number 2 was episode uh, 9 of Gauntlet. And number 1, um, the season finale, episode 25 and 26. I must admit, I feel like this is like the combination of, of both our lists put together. Hmm. Um, Definitely. The Java Void, uh, they put uh, number 10, Iron Monster. Number 9, Pulverizer. Number 8, Master Attacks. Number 7, uh, Metalhead. Uh, number 6, New Friend Older Than Me. Number 5, um, Baxter's Gambit. Number 4, uh, Never Say Never. Number 3, It Came From The Depths. Number 2, Parasitica. I oh, know I said it wrong, don't, don't, just don't. Uh, and I'm not one, even gonna go there. Uh, number one, Cockroach Terminator. I mean, that's like really interesting. It's like love. Mm. Like, I must be this like feeling there, which I didn't, uh, which I was quite surprised at. With, um, oh, oh, wait, hang on. I, I was talking, oh, 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 no, oh, no, never mind. That number episode nine was the pulverizer. Yikes. Let's say about that. The better. Um, freelance oh. wolf. Okay, oh, 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 hang, hang on, I'll be in agreement that episode, the episode, uh, The Pulverizer and Pulverizer Returns are like the worst episodes from the season. Why do you, why do you not, well, I was gonna say, I, um, I didn't put them in my list for said reasons. Yeah. Um, okay, so Freelance Wolf, uh, they put, um, they started to come up with a top 10, let alone top 5 or top 3. And I accidentally, I was meant to say understandable, but I accidentally put unstable. Uh, so then I had um, uh, one person comment uh, the actual uh, way to spell it. So great. Um, we got Sonic Fan 958. Uh, they put for number 10. Um, actually, I don't, I don't know what way they're going. Number 10 Showdown Part 1 and Part 2, but I don't know if that's the top 10 or the number 1. Either way, number 9 is Operation Breakout, Episode 8, uh, Cockroach Terminator, Number 7, Pulverizer, yikes, uh, oh. Episode 6, New Girl in Town, Episode 5, um, uh, Mouser Attack, Episode, uh, Number 4, Panic in the Sewers, um, Number 3, Metal Head, I'm very surprised at that one, um, Number 2, I think his name is Baxter Stockman, and Number 1, Rise of the Tales Part 1 and Part 2. I feel as though I probably put them in the, in the wrong order, but then again, mm. why why say it like that? <sighs> okay, uh, let's move on to Facebook. You got Michael Stoop. Uh, they put oof, uh, too many to count. It's easier to say what are my least favorite episodes as uh, as I can count uh, count them uh, on one hand. Um, so yeah, they put um, um, I think. The episode which I did say was breaking. Um, oh, wait, I asked him. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, we've got Bria Tumblr. They put. Um, I forgot the titles for it, uh, but I really like the characters were played out in episode 1. Uh, Baxter's uh, instruction, Lev Head's instruction, Nevo Hate Their Weird Relationship, uh, and Karai's uh, instruction. And of course, the season finale episodes. Um, must admit, they're all pretty good episodes. Uh, Davy Kondra, they put. Uh, Iron Monster, um, I think that was the only episode they put down, uh, it was, it was one of the favourites. Uh, the Gauntlet is another one of their favourite one, uh, and I think that's the only two they put down. Uh, we've got Robert Given, uh, they put, uh, my favourite episode, my favourite episode from the season is the very first episode and how it started. Uh, it was a word uh, for word for the first comic uh, book in the prelude scene that made the show special and different from all other shows. The thing is, I've looked at the co- I looked at the, I looked at the comic which I was referencing, and I don't know what scene they're actually talking about. Um, so yeah, you got uh, oh no, that's a different one. Oh, uh, Jiz Verbuki. They put episode ten uh, looked uh, totally awesome. It was the first time uh, uh, the Shredder fight and it absolutely rocked. Cannot argue with that. Uh, we've got Precious Pixie uh, put, uh, I think 
they put it was uh, because it was quite hard to for them to actually come up with an answer. They put uh, that it was episode one. I'm pretty sure it was just because a Donny and spinning stick or something. Um, and yeah, uh, we've got Magma Striker put uh, from season one. Honestly, the ending of Nali is the one that sticks to my mind the most, along with Vax's Gambit and the enemy of my enemy. Um, uh, also, maybe the, uh, one with neutralize as well. So yeah, I must admit I was quite surprised uh, with some of the episodes which were put on the on people's list because um, I mean the ones that like we didn't really put on our list, such as Metalhead and the Pulverizer, um, which I was quite surprised about. But each their own, I guess. And the like, other thing that's like because I, I'm not a really big 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 fan of the this version. And I don't know how much you're f- like even though you're a fan of this version, who knows when we we'll get to other versions of Turtles. So I must admit, like hearing it from like true hardcore fans of this show, it's it's really interesting. Okay, so now that it's coming to the end, we start the next phase in this podcast, talking about uh, episode one from season uh, from season one of the 2003 show, and that episode is called "Things Change." Well, what do you think is going to ha- happen in that episode? Well, to be honest, I have not the faintest of clues of what's going to happen in this episode, Teddy. Like, it's a new series, it's a different, could be a different entire universe, like, dimension. This is, I really don't know, to be honest. I really do not know what's going to happen. Okay. Well, that is quite surprising, considering that you have still seen the episode, or you have seen the episode before. <laughs> Many months ago, have I? Yeah, it, yeah, it was at college, and I was, I gave you the link to the episode. You watched it, and straight after you watched it, you, you, you come up to me and said, "You thought that the episode was good. You liked Leonardo. You said you watched more, and you never did." <laughs> so I guess uh, next week's one will be really interesting. Then, bring back a lot of yeah. memories. Uh huh. Definitely. Oh, and also it was um. One of the motion comics we did as well, where we was playing the two boys. I don't know if you did actually watch the full version afterwards. I remember. Yep. Yeah, it's from like a different point of view of that episode. So, ah, right. So, it's yeah, coming so, back to me now. Yeah, so I'll say that you have like ideas of what's going to happen in the episode, but like very faint. Yeah. If you had, if you said to me, "Oh, what's the, what's your idea on the next series?" I would, I couldn't give you any clues because, <laughs> like, I, I just couldn't. Okay, well, I mean, I mean, even though it's not ideal to watch an episode beforehand and forget about it, but I mean, on, a, on a, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, on one hand, at least you have like an idea of what to expect and stuff like that. Because I know for this one, you just went in blind and. You had no idea what's going to happen in this show, but at least with this one, you sort of have a faint idea of what to expect, and people probably forgot about it. Yeah, but maybe it would be better because I would have a fresh memory and reliving it, and re rediscovering it. So could it end up with some interesting commentary for next week. Yeah. Also, do you think that because now that you actually are like in turtles and actually having a proper understanding of everything with like the total universe in terms of like who, like who the total like who each total is the side characters main characters then stuff like that uh, you, i feel like you're probably gonna be a lot more into it other than just oh i've got some time to spare I might as well watch it yeah it, it's gonna be an interesting one i'd say yeah must admit also is the like the 2003 show is my favourite version of Turtle, so it's going to be next week's one is going to be really interesting because uh, I'll, I'll definitely have like a lot to say about it, like childhood stuff, uh, what uh, like little Easter egg type stuff and all that. There's going to be like a lot more to s- I'll, I'll have to say uh, from it, uh, and I must admit it's going to be really interesting to like hear your opinion on it. Because, because, I mean, I won't lie. The whole reason why I started the podcast was to talk about the 2003 version. And now we can finally do it. And I'm beyond the moon with like, excitement when we're talking about it. It's gonna be good. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, this has been the final episode for the season one of the 2012 Tim and T show. Um, and yeah, if you do want to leave any sort of comments uh, for the 2003 show, um, you could do so on the. Oh, uh, where do we do it now? Oh god. Uh, the Tim and. No, the YouTube Shorts, YouTube um, community tab, Facebook pages, uh, Reddit posts. The anchor uh, messages or the message uh, voice messages on anchor. Uh, but yeah, this has been another episode of Talking Tales. I've been your host Teddy. I've been Hayden. And we'll see you all soon. Good bye, yo. Bye. Bye.